Autosomal uh, dominance, page 58, questions 1A. Okay, so we're working our way through this. We're on the third one here now. This one, of course, autosomal dominant. That means carried on an autosomal chromosome, not a sex chromosome. We're going to have letters. But this case, it's dominant. Now, these are fairly rare conditions. Uh, not as rare as sex link dominance. But let's go through our problem here on... Uh, page 58 I believe it is okay 56 and 58 or 57 and 58 so uh, this is the pedigree and then again they want us to d distinguish some of the genotypes or determine the genotypes uh, based on the mode of inheritance it says it's autosomal dominant now how we know that let's look at some of the evidence for that every single generation is affected okay uh relatively equal boys and girls in this case exactly equal right uh, which is, doesn't always happen but in this case pretty easy to determine we have three females and three males every single generation somebody is affected by this disorder this one is called polydactyl uh, so that makes it uh autosomal right and heterozygous Parents, heterozygous parents. And how do we determine if somebody's heterozygous? Some kids with it, some kids without it. That means that these individuals are heterozygous. And when they're heterozygous and they have the disorder, that's dominant. Okay? Whereas previous ones we looked at, if you were heterozygous and you didn't have the disorder, made you recessive. So because of that, we're going to give, and they give the, uh, the notation here, but let's put it up in the corner, capital P. Doesn't matter what the other allele is. That's going to be poly. And poly, extra uh, toes, fingers. You see this lots in cats and dogs and that. Right? And to be normal, it's actually recessive. So two little P's make them very distinguishable from your big P's. That's normal. Okay, there's our legend. Very important that you give the capital letter to the dominant uh, disorder in this case, polydactyl. Okay, so because of that, anybody that's normal, we like that. We can just easily pop those in. Okay, all these guys are normal. So little peas, all of them. Now again, because this is autosomal, we don't care about X's and Y's and boys and girls and all that kind of stuff. So we can fill in lots of these guys right here. Now, anyone that has the disorder must have at least a capital P. So we can start popping in some of those guys. Okay. Now, these two parents, individuals 1-1 one, one and 1-2, one, we know they're heterozygous. How do we know that? Look at the kid that they had. Follow the trace. They had a son that had, that was normal. Two little peas. Where'd they come from? Well, one must have came from each parent. So we know they're hetero. And because hedros are shaded in, have the disorder of polydactyl, we know that they uh, this is a dominant, dominant trait. Okay, uh, take a look at this individual's 2-2 two, two right here. They have a capital P because they have poly. But their other allele, we have to go down and look at their kids. They had some kids that were unaffected, little peas. Well, one parent contributed that. That's all that male can do. Female must have contributed the other one, so she must be hedro. Okay? And same thing here. This male down 3, 4, he has poly, so he has a capital P. But look at dad. His dad could only contribute... A little p so we know he's hetero okay and the only thing that leads us to now and this is again one of the limitations of human genetics is this individual's two three this guy right here he lived in the basement of his mom and dad's house till he was 50 he never made it right and uh because of that we can't tell what his other allele is so that's the only one out of all of this all the individuals in this pedigree that we can't determine we don't know if he's capital B, capital P, or if he's capital P, little p. And we wouldn't know unless he hooked up with somebody and uh, 
add some offspring, and then we could fill that in. Again, one of the limitations, not all individuals actually produce offspring. Okay, so uh, I won't bother filling in all these. You can extrapolate that information just from the uh, genotypes I put right on the pedigree itself there. So any questions, give me an email. Thanks.